Hello, we are going to get right into this yin yoga class. We're going to start in Savasana or corpse pose by setting our intentions for this practice. Focus on what you want to bring into your life and what you are needing to let go of in order to allow that change and that shift. We will remain in Savasana while we're setting our intentions. Even if your intention is just to get a good workout or to relax, whatever your intentions are, mine are usually to simplify. It's usually my intentions that I try to focus on. Prepare to do five deep belly breaths with hands on your tummy like you're filling a balloon with air or you're nine months pregnant or you have a basketball in your belly, basketball in your belly. Inhale through your nose and exhale through your mouth five times. Continue relaxing in corpse pose. Slowly turn your head and your neck to look out over your right shoulder. Two deep breaths. turning your head and neck back to neutral and then looking out over your left shoulder. And then back to neutral. When we're done with that, we'll hug the right knee for several breaths. You might want to engage your foot, flexing your heel, pointing your toe, rotating your ankle. Hugging that knee tight, paying close attention to the micro movements and the compression in your right hip socket. Then we're going to reach for the strap, getting the canvas to go across the ball of your right foot, and then straightening your leg. You might want to have your knee slightly bent. You might want to keep it straight. You might want to do a little bit of both. Pull that leg just a little closer to your chest. And then we're going to bring that right leg out to the right side with or without the strap for the half straddle to the right.
Carefully set your right leg back down on the mat, setting your strap aside and switching legs to hug your left knee in tight. Again, you might want to engage your foot, flexing your heel, pointing your toes, rotating your ankle. Paying attention once again to the micro movements and the compression in your left hip socket. Then you're going to pick up your strap again and place the canvas across the ball of your left foot, straightening out that leg, holding it there. Again, you might want to have the knee slightly bent, or you might want to bend it a little and then straighten it and then bend it again. It's always fine to continue movement. Pulling that leg just a little closer to your chest. And then getting that left leg out to the left side with or without your strap for the half straddle on the other side. And lower that left leg back down to the mat, stretching both legs out long and stretching arms straight up overhead. Hug both of your knees tightly. And then while continuing to hold your right knee, you can lower that left leg down to the mat. You might want to grab a bolster or a pillow to then place that right knee onto the left side of your body for the supine twist. You can put your arms in a T. Keeping your drishti out over your right fingertips. You have the option to use your left hand to apply a light pressure at any point in time to your right knee if you wish. Just relax into that stretch and really enjoy letting go and feeling that twist in your leg, in your back, in your neck, all throughout your spine. Slowly and carefully turn your head and neck to be looking out over your left fingertips. Two deep breaths. And then slowly turn your head and neck back to look over the right fingertips again. And then back to neutral. You can lower that right leg down to the floor, hugging in both of your knees together, head and neck towards the knees, rocking and rolling, and then lowering your right leg to the floor while continuing to hug your left knee. And when you bring that left knee across your body to place it on the floor on the right side for that supine twist, you can use a bolster or a pillow again, or a block if you wish. Arms in a T. Keeping your gaze out over your left fingertips. Mm -hmm. 
using your right hand, you can apply that light pressure to the left knee at any point in time. Just enjoy that twist and that stretch. Slowly you can turn your head and neck to the right, looking out over your right fingertips. Taking two deep breaths. And slowly and carefully you can rotate your head and neck to be looking back over your left fingertips. And then back to neutral. Lower that left leg back down to the floor, coming out of the twist. Hugging both knees again, stretching the neck. You can rotate your ankles and engage the feet, flexing the heels, pointing your toes. And then we're going to get into reclined butterfly. You may want a bolster under your knees or blocks or pillows for support. It's up to you. Reaching your arms out to the sides, arching them overhead in a half moon to steeple grip. We'll hold that steeple grip. And then we're going to flap the butterfly wings down so arms are at our sides, palms are facing up. It's important to surrender. Slowly sliding your arms back up overhead, touching the fingertips to each other. With your arms overhead outstretched, fingers and thumbs touching. We'll stay in the butterfly for a few more breaths. If you have bolster or pillows, you can remove those props. And then we're going to do the reclined tree pose on each side. First, you can straighten out your left leg and Keep the sole of your right foot to the inseam of your left leg. Prayer hands overhead. You're welcome to branch your arms out, goal posts, cactus, or steeple grip, whatever is comfortable for you. And then we're going to simply switch sides, straightening out your right leg and then placing your sole of your left foot to the inseam of your right leg, keeping the arms overhead branched out, goal post, steeple grip, prayer hands, yogi's choice. And then coming out of that, we will reach for the strap. And with the strap on the balls of both feet, we'll do legs up the wall. Knees can be straight or slightly bent. You can rock and wiggle. You can alternate the legs, walking them out straight and bending each one at a time if you wish.
continue to keep your left foot in the strap on the ball of your foot and place your right foot across your left thigh for reclined pigeon. You can bend that left knee slightly or you can keep it straight or a little bit of both, straightening it and bending it as you see fit. And then switching your feet out, get your right foot into that strap and your left foot goes across your right thigh. And we will hold that reclined pigeon on the other side. Again, option to bend the knee, straighten it, or a little bit of both. Coming out of that, we will lay flat and set the strap aside. We're going to do three bumblebee breaths. Your fingers on your eyes, thumbs on your ear cartilage, so your index finger, middle finger, and ring finger over your eyes, thumbs on the tragus, closing off the airway to the ears, breathing in through your nose and out through your nose. We're going to hum low pitch three times when we're breathing out. After that, we're going to slowly and carefully turn ourselves over to the left or to the right, flipping yourself over to lay prone on your front side. You can rest your head on your hands, stacked lightly, laying on top of one another. Coming up on your elbows and forearms into Sphinx. We'll hike up the right knee out to the right side with your right arm out in front of you. And with your left arm, you can thread the needle, making any adjustments for the pose you need as you get into the supine twist once again. You can get your right hand onto your right hip. You can straighten that right arm. You can try to lay it flat on the ground with both shoulders flat, or just keep that right hand on the right hip. We'll hold this, and at any point, you can use your left hand to apply that light pressure to your right knee, keeping your gaze out over your right fingertips if your arms are in a T or just out over your right shoulder if they're not. Feel the difference from the last supine twist, having gotten into this pose from an entirely different sequence of directives and prompts. Also pay attention to the similarities along with the differences.
As you come out of this twist, you'll rest your head on your hands stacked lightly at top of one another again. And then bend both of your knees up so that you can do a windshield wiper movement with your feet and calves, gliding them back and forth. And then lower the feet back to the mat, coming back up onto your forearms and elbows and hands for that Sphinx pose. And then we'll hike the left knee up to the left side with your left arm out in front of you. Thread your right knee, your right arm through the needle. And then you can place your left hand on your left hip. Same as the other side, you can adjust yourself so that both shoulders and arms are flat on the ground in a T. Or you can simply keep your left hand on your left hip. Again, you have that same option to apply a light pressure with the right hand on your left knee at any point if you wish. And keeping your drishti out over your left shoulder or left fingertips if your arms are in a T. When you're coming out of that twist, again, rest your head on your hands stacked lightly on top of one another. And in an exaggerated motion, really windshield wiper those feet and knees, loosening those hips out. And then lower those feet back down to the mat send your hips back towards your feet into a wide knee child's pose. You could use a bolster or a block if you like. We're going to ragdoll the torso. Really just relaxing into it. Allow gravity to do the work for you. And if you're using any props, just really lean into those props. Trust that they will support your weight. Sometimes it's hard to just let go. Breathe into it. Trust the gravity to support your body and keep you safe. Keep you protected. Give you what you need. And then coming up into a tabletop movement We'll lie back on the belly and then back into Sphinx on the forearms again. This time spreading your hands and your fingers out as wide as you can. Really feel that Sphinx. And then turn your right forearm to be parallel with the top of your mat. Reaching back with your left hand for your left foot, hold that half bow.
And then when you let go of your foot with your hand, you can rest your head on your hands, again, stacking them lightly on top of one another. And again, windshield wipering those feet, really moving your hips. Lowering the feet back down to the mat. Same thing for the other side. We'll come up into Sphinx, spreading the hands and fingers out as wide as you can. And then turning that left forearm to be parallel with the top of your mat, reaching back with your right hand to your right foot and holding that for several breaths. Letting go of your right foot, you can rest your hands. Oh, hold on a second. <laughs> I went ahead of myself. Um, when you let go, let's send your hips back into child's pose so you're sitting on your feet you can rest your head on a block for several breaths we're going to be in the child's pose for a little bit Ragdoll your torso, and then we're going to slide the hands and arms over towards the right side of the mat, walking the fingers to the right edge, and reaching towards that right corner. And then sliding the hands back towards the middle of the mat, maybe walking your fingers back to neutral. And then walking or sliding your hands or fingers to the left edge of the mat. Reaching towards that left corner, really feeling that stretch in your ribs. And then back to neutral. Just relaxing into it. Slowly come up into hero's pose. We'll pause there momentarily. You may need a block or a pillow for hero's pose, but we won't be here long. We're gonna swing our legs out around in front of us for a staff pose, and we're going to Use a bolster, maybe some pillows or blocks to stack up on the legs so that we can ragdoll our torso over our legs, being supported by the props. Alternatively, you can just use a strap on the balls of your feet for the same type of effect here if you like.
I'm going to stay here for a little bit, really trusting gravity and trusting the props to support your torso. That is, if you're using props, if you have the strap on the balls of your feet, just allow gravity to do the work for you. You can envision your hips tilting slightly towards your feet, towards your toes. If you're using props, allow them to completely support the weight of your torso. to it. And then when we're done with that, we can remove the pillows and the bolster or set the strap aside. Keeping your left leg stretched out long, bring the right foot to the inseam of your left thigh. Reach for those toes. You could use the strap here if you like on your left, ball of your left foot. You can hold those toes with your left hand if you like. You can reach for them with your right hand as well. Again, allow gravity to do the work for you. Breathing into it. And then we're going to come up into a wide straddle stretch. Leaning forward. In that wide straddle. And then we're going to switch it out to the other side, the left foot to the inner right thigh with the right leg out straight and reaching for the right toes. You can hold those right toes in your right hand. You can reach for them with your left hand over that. You could use the strap here if you like. Then we're going to come up and again stretch both legs out into the wide straddle. Leaning forward, you can reach for your blocks out in front of you or if you'd like you can rest your forehead on a couple of blocks stacked on top of each other. I'm going to hold this for several breaths. <clears throat> And we're going to come into Seated Butterfly, holding both of your feet with your hands, soles together, bending your neck and your head towards your feet. And then bring your head up to neutral. We'll twist our head from side to side, first looking out over the right shoulder. Deep breath, then back to neutral, looking out over the left shoulder, and 
and back to neutral. Stretching the neck down, you can roll it out lightly from side to side. If you feel comfortable with doing a full circle, you can do that in one direction and then a full circle in the other direction. Twist your head from side to side like you're saying no. You can nod your head up and down like you're saying yes. And then we're going to get the head and neck back into neutral, sitting up again and shifting into easy pose before dropping the right ear to the right shoulder using light pressure with your right fingertips on your head if you'd like. And you can kind of massage those neck muscles out by moving your head and neck slightly backwards and forwards. And then bringing your head and neck back to neutral dropping your left ear to your left shoulder, that slight pressure with your left fingertips. Massaging those muscles with slight movements forward and back. And again, back to neutral. Turn your head and neck slowly to the right. And then neutral to the left and then neutral. Now we're going to bring ourselves into a wide straddle leaning forward again with the blocks in front of you. You can reach for them. You can also stack them on top of each other to rest your forehead on. We're going to stay here for a minute. Coming up, you can pick up the blocks, one in each of your hands, reaching over the left foot. You can place those blocks, one on each side of your foot, and rest your hands on each of the blocks, or reach for your toes. We're going to hold this for several breaths. Then you can pick up the blocks and place them on either side of your right foot and either rest your hands on those blocks or reach for your toes. And we'll hold this for another half minute or so.
And then back to neutral. Our next pose will be bending our right knee over our left leg, which is out straight, twisting to the right, gazing to the back of the room. Going to keep your drishti out as far over your shoulder as you can. You have your right arm behind you. Pay attention to your posture. Keep leveraging that left elbow onto your right knee. Slowly, you're going to turn your head and neck to gaze out towards the front of the room over your left shoulder. And then slowly turning your gaze to be looking out over your right shoulder again, all while continuing to leverage that left elbow on the right knee. And then we're going to simply switch sides, coming out of that, and then bending the left knee over the right leg. Right leg is out straight. Twisting to the left, gazing towards the back of the room, leveraging the right elbow on the left knee. The left arm is behind you, supporting you. Continue leveraging that right elbow on that left knee. Slowly turn your head and neck to gaze out towards the front of the room over the right shoulder. And then slowly turning your head and neck to be looking towards the back of the room again over your left shoulder, continuing to leverage that right elbow onto that left knee. And coming out of this twist, we will get back into butterfly, holding the soles of both your feet together, pressing your knees towards the floor, bending your head and neck towards your feet and floor. And then imagine that a string is being pulled from the center of your head towards the ceiling or the sky, coming up into perfect posture. Turn the head to the right, back to neutral. 
to the left and then back to neutral and now we'll get into Lord of the Fish, bending the right knee over the left knee that is also bent and twisting to the right. Right arm is back behind us. Left elbow is leveraging against that right knee. Looking towards the back of the room. Continuing to leverage that elbow on the knee. We're going to slowly turn the head and neck to be looking over the opposite side. Opposite shoulder. And then slowly turning the head and neck to be looking out over the right shoulder again. Coming out of this pretzel, we will straighten both legs out in front of us for a staff pose. Reaching your arms up to the sky, steeple gripping your fingers. And then basket weaving your fingers together and turning your arms inside out to stretch those hands. Reaching up tall. And then either with your fingers in that basket weave or steeple grip, you can bend forwards towards your toes. And take a deep breath before switching legs out for the other side. Coming up, we will get our left knee over the right bent knee, twisting to the left. The right arm is leveraging against that left knee looking towards the back of the room with the left arm behind us. Really leveraging that right arm on that left knee. Keeping your drishti over that left shoulder. Slowly you can turn your head and your neck to be looking out over your right shoulder. And then slowly returning to be looking back out over your left shoulder. And then head back to neutral coming out of this pretzel twist once again in staff pose. Reaching the arms out wide to the sides, legs are out front, making that half moon arch, touching the fingertips overhead. And then reaching for your toes. When you come up into neutral, you can transition into easy pose. And then reaching your arms out to the sides once again into that half moon arch and touching your hands together above your head to prepare for eagle arms. You can get your arms into cactus or goal posts and then the right elbow over the left elbow. 
hands together, pushing elbows up slightly, bending the head and neck down. And then slowly looking up and moving your arms and head and neck together, looking up towards the ceiling as high as possible, leaning your head back slightly while still in eagle arms. And then back to neutral, unpretzel your arms Spread them back out wide to the sides, arching them out overhead up into another half moon, touching those hands together overhead, and then back into cactus for eagle arms with the left elbow over the right elbow, pushing the elbows up slightly and bending the neck down. Feel that stretch across your neck and shoulders. When you're ready, you can slowly move your head and neck to be looking towards the ceiling moving your arms in eagle arm position with your head and neck, looking up as high as you can, arching your neck slightly back before coming back to neutral, unpretzeling those arms, stretching them out wide to the sides again into another half moon arch, bringing them to steeple grip, sitting tall. And then we're going to stretch over the right thigh, sort of in the two o'clock position. If your arms were clock arms, you still have your hands in the steeple grip. And then we're going to slide the torso slowly in front and then over to the left thigh so that you're at about a 10 o'clock position. And then slowly gliding and sliding your torso back across the front, back to that two o'clock position. And then coming back to neutral And then we're going to lay down on the back, plant both feet on the floor, knees are bent. You might want to have a block or a pillow in between your knees and maybe another or a bolster next to you so that you can allow your knees to fall to the right. Arms are in a T focusing your gaze out over your left fingertips. We're going to just enjoy this nice stretch. Just let go. Slowly move the head and neck so that you're looking out over your right shoulder. Arms can still be in that T. Then bring your head back to neutral. Mm -hmm. 
bring your knees back to neutral and then allow both knees to fall to the left, gazing out over your right fingertips. Enjoy that relaxing twist, nice and easy. Slowly turn your head and neck to gaze out over the left shoulder. And then slowly back to be gazing out over your right again. And back to neutral. Knees are back to neutral. can remove the props both feet flat on the mat again putting your right knee over your left knee and allowing your legs to fall to the right with your arms in a T gazing out over the left fingertips This is one of my favorites, probably my very favorite of all. They're pretty much all my favorites. <laughs> but this one is extra special. Coming back to neutral, we'll have both feet flat on the mat. Hug your knees to your chest, rocking and rolling. And then when you let go, both feet planted onto the mat once again for the other side, placing your left knee over your right knee and falling the legs to your left side with your gaze out over your right fingertips if your arms are in a T. Again, allow gravity to do the work for you and just really enjoy this stretch, this twist. It's phenomenal, isn't it? Coming out of this twist, we will hug the knees in once again, one more time, rocking and rolling, 
And then if you would like, if it's in your practice, there's an opportunity here to do the happy baby. If you don't want to do the happy baby, there's several other options you can take. You could get into the supported bridge pose early or any other movements that you like. If you're in the happy baby, you might want to rock the baby. You might want to alternate slightly straightening and bending each knee one at a time. And maybe splits. Lots of options here. Let's give you a minute to play with that. So if you're not already in supported bridge, coming out from whatever form you're in, you can lay flat and then reach for a block to slide that under the small of your back. When you plant the feet firmly on the mat and lift the hips, put that block under the small of your back on its lowest level is usually recommended and we'll remain in supported bridge for about a minute. And then while still on the block, you can do legs up the wall again with or without the strap. As you come out of legs up the wall, you can remove that block. If it's in your practice, there's an option here for shoulder stand and the plow. You can take a minute or two to do these or Yogi's Choice. Any stretch you feel like your body needs before getting into Savasana or you're free to get into Savasana early if you like. Yogi's Choice. If you're in the plow and coming out of the plow, then slow and controlled with your chin tucked, roll yourself down to the floor one vertebrae at a time to then relax into Savasana for three full minutes.
remember what your intentions were that you set at the beginning of the practice. Focus once again on what it is you want to cultivate in your life and what it is that you want to let go of to make room for that change and that shift. Believe it or not, corpse pose used to be the most challenging of them all for me when I first started my teacher training last year. But I don't think I'm alone in that. It can be challenging just to let go. So used to pushing ourselves, holding it together. Okay to just relax and be comfortable and know that everything will be okay. If you notice you're holding your attention anywhere, just let it go. As we come back into the room, into the awareness in our bodies, you can either roll to one side or the other to then gently push yourself up slowly. Or if it's comfortable for you, there's also an option to rock slightly with your chin tucked, coming up onto your elbows and then into staff pose. Either way, we'll meet in staff pose, reaching the arms out to the sides, arching them up to half moon overhead, hands into the steeple grip, arching the back ever so slightly while looking towards the ceiling, and then reaching for those toes. Sitting back upright, you can transition your legs into easy pose. Place your left hand lightly on your right knee, your right hand onto the floor behind you. Very lightly twisting to the right. And then crossing your right hand over the left arm onto your left knee. So your arms are crossed and then reaching your left hand behind you to the left for another light twist. Coming out of this twist, we'll place the left arm over the right. So we're crossing the arms again. Crisscross applesauce and then we'll reach both hands out to the sides, arching them overhead towards the sky, 
touching the palms to each other and then lowering your hands so that one is on each of your knees touching your pointer fingers and your thumbs we're going to chant om three times in a low pitch in easy pose stretching the arms out wide to the sides for one last half moon arch bring the arms up overhead to prayer hands and then to acknowledge your insight and your wisdom touching your thumbs or knuckles to your third eye on the way to hands over heart we'll take the palm of your left hand placing that on your heart and then placing the palm of your right hand over your left hand and then bow to a close to seal the practice and so it is thank you so much for practicing with me today and your body thanks you have a very blessed rest of your day and drink your water <laughs>